Yeah, I was going to ask, because there have been some concerns about maybe squad depth, um, but you've spoken mm-hmm. about how Serena has pushed you when you, you were vying for a spot in the England squad. Tell us a little bit more, you know, about her player management with you. Like, how did she motivate mm-hmm. you? Uh, so it's a funny story this so my kind of let's say my international career plans were probably scuppered a bit by Covid so I would have loved to have gone off the back of the 2019 World Cup do the Olympics which would have been 2020 but obviously it all got bumped to year and then I was kind of like when it all got bumped to year I was a bit like I'm not really sure my this is going to align with what I have planned and whether I could push myself to keep going um, and I can hit the levels that I want to hit or I need to be hitting so all kind of got Obviously, I, I, I love Chelsea and I was quite happy that's where my career was going to end. And I, but I knew obviously I wasn't as playing as much as I needed to be at Chelsea um, to be competing internationally. So then Serena comes in and I get put into the first camp and everyone's going, well, what's Carly doing in the camp? Like, <laughs> just being kind of pulled out of nowhere. Um, and I was kind of like, oh, this is nice. Like, great, <laughs> back in with the team. Um, so she was like, we're going to have a chat when you get here. I really want to know like your thoughts on what you're going to be doing for the next year. And I thought, sounds great. Like, we'll have a chit chat. Gets to camp, like training. Uh, met, obviously, Darren for the first time. Lovely guy. Uh, really ambitious. His first one working with the girls team as well. So he was like, obviously, in kind of, this is how we work. Or really interesting. Having good conversations. Having conversations with me, like your experience here like what was it like to work within like a group of girls like set pieces how do they what do they like doing or so it was it was really nice camp in terms of that because I feel like it was a good learning experience for everyone but when it comes to mine and Serena's conversation she was like I remember being upstairs in the Southampton um right on the top floor and she was she was taking different people in it wasn't just me there was different people obviously she wanted to it was her first camp she was just meeting people she was like right then Carly so what are your plans and I was like very straight to the point <laughs> I said, I'm going to be honest with you, Serena, like, I, I don't really know why I'm here. And I was like, this wasn't really in my plans, to be honest. And she was like laughing. She was like, okay, okay. She's like, but do you want to play? And I was like, again, I'll be very honest. Like, I'm probably a year past of me playing it, wanting to play national football. But I said, however, we do have a, it is a home tournament. And you've kind of, after these past few days of training and getting to know you, I'm like, my feet are twitching a little bit in terms of like, do can I just go another year? But I said to her, I was like, look, my situation at Chelsea is I'm third choice. Emma operates on three, well, potentially six keepers now. It was three keepers when I was there, but we're at about six Madness. or seven now. <laughs> um, yeah, so she likes to always have three keepers. Being burnt before, you get an injury, you get COVID, and you're left with, like, no one, or you're having to draft in one of the kids from the academy. And she's just like, while we're in all competitions, it just doesn't work like that. She likes to have three competent goalkeepers. Um, and I was like, probably can't get out on loan, and my situation's not going to change. She's like, okay, okay. But she was like, maybe. And I was like, I mean, I, can, I was like, I can ask Emma the question if I can go out on loan. I was like, it's like, she was like, I think you should. And I was like, okay, cool. So <laughs> finish the camp, go away. Three weeks later, obviously, she's making a selection for the next camp, rings me. Anything's changed? Are you? I said, Serena, no, absolutely not. Nothing's changed. And she's like, have you had the conversation? I said, well, kind of dropped it a little bit, but not really. And she was just like, okay, okay. She was like, I can't select you because you haven't been playing. I said, no, I, I, I knew that. I was like, I, I didn't expect to be in this camp. And she's like, okay. She was like, I just, I just wanted to, to make sure. And I was like, no, no, I really, honestly, I really appreciate the call. And she was like, I was like, good luck for the games. Like, girls are great. They're doing really well. <clears throat> so then I signed for San Diego. She rings me straight away. She's like, is this to play? Are you going out to play? And I said, <laughs> no Serena I'm not going to play again she was like oh okay she was like well I just want to say good luck so I feels like it's great she was like um I really like you she's like I hope you do really well she's honestly so sweet with me but she was just we were just really honest with each other and I just knew that my international time was kind of up and I, I was quite happy and content for Mary Ellie Sandy Hannah um for me they're the, the next generation of player um would I've liked to have obviously ended my career winning a Euros I mean who wasn't who doesn't want the fairy tale ending um but that doesn't exist for everyone and there's very few people that get to do that um and I'm very I was very very happy and content with my international career I got to do some amazing things with some amazing people and Serena's just a great person and there's she's not only fantastically fantastic tactically and analytically and how much she loves the game but as a person, I think that someone that you need in an environment that's very intense, I think she just makes it all very normal and very easy. And it feels very strange sometimes that she's that relaxed, <laughs> um, but it makes you relaxed. And I think you can see that with anyone that kind of ventures into her space. 
and even with my retirement she just I remember doing the media day on the Tuesday before it was the Saturday and she come, she was like it's your day on Saturday and I was like what's <laughs> happening to me she was like I'm not telling you but it's your day and we're going to celebrate and I was just like even that I'm like I don't see her but she's so nice and she's always like oh my god how are you you look so well like she's just like has a real nicety about her that she just takes she just listens and she notices things and she just makes you feel like very appreciated um whatever role you play for her within her team she knows how important every single one of those people are within her group so um yeah she's she's great and that was that was my journey with serena which ended very nicely when i got my retirement so yeah. What an accolade. You're the person who turned down Serena Weigman twice. <laughs> don't don't put that as the headline. Um but yeah, there was there was um it was it was it was it was really nice that she really thought that I could be part of the group. I think she appreciates obviously the balance of having experience and whatnot, but at the end of the day I knew my time was the right time and I knew that the group that she had as goalkeepers and as as the team around her that my experience was not needed or required but it was again an experience I think that um Sandy Hannah um Ellie and Mary would have benefited more from um so yeah I think that it was it was the right thing to do for me. 